So here's a disclaimer. This video is actually the cut up of a live recording session I did the other day. I just removed the wrong path I've taken and cut out some lengthy pauses in order not to confuse or bore you. But otherwise this clip has been recorded without prior preparation. I just wanted to see where I can get in a half hour without knowing too much of the library. But don't worry, it won't be that lengthy. So let's see how it goes. So I came along this library called Tone.js. And since I have already been looking for a decent web audio API wrapper for a long time, I decided to give it a try. One of my other side projects includes a game-like generative audio interaction pattern, so this sounded very promising. We start out the same way as in the previous episode by cloning the Electron Quick Start. For reference, I've included the Node version I'm using here. Let's install the dependencies plus the Paper.js and Tone.js packages. I'm using the former as a simple visualization for this tutorial, but save it up for future tutorials. Let's see if this works. Good. We open VS Code and remove the boilerplate HTML again. Let's add a canvas element and style it like in the previous video. We start it and get our black window. We had to render a JS and require in paper. Here's something you need to know before we continue. Paper does a little magic behind the scenes, that's why usually you wrap it up in a script type text paper script tag. You can, however, make it work in plain JavaScript if you make the paper scope globally available by installing it. We copy and paste that sample code, which draws a simple line on the screen. Set width, height and background color and voila, there it is. Now from the same page, we take the sample code to set up a mouse tool and insert that. This is simply adding points to a path when the mouse is held down. Okay, that seems to work. From another tutorial, we draw in an example where circles are drawn on the path according to a minimum and maximum distance between drag events. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, now play around with that distances a little. Fine. Let's require in tone now and just take that example from the getting started page. Okay, let's refresh. Oops, seems like we have an error here. Ah, of course, we have to assign that required module to a variable. Okay, let's trigger a sound whenever a drag event occurs. Let's try a metal synth now. I've taken it from this example. Let's look up what trigger attack release does with this synth. If you ask me, it's a little black mark on the Tone.js package that this isn't consistent across different instruments. Ah, okay, duration, offset time and velocity. Let's try a duration of 500 milliseconds starting immediately. It seems that events are overlapping here, so let's get shorter. Obviously, polyphony is a little problem here. It turns out there's polysynth to achieve that, 
but we're not going this deep here. So adjust minimum distance and duration again. All right, this will do for now. Let's look at the node's velocity, that is its volume. We make that dependent on the distance between two events, of course normalized to those 40 pixels. We do the same to the frequency, but this time take the event's y-coordinate. Let's console lock that. Looks good. Now off to some sound design. We make the duration even shorter. Seems much smoother now. Let's look at some effects that are at our disposal. I love a good bit crusher, so let's try that out. Oops, we need to pull that up so we can connect them in right order. Send the bit crusher to master and connect the synth to the bit crusher. Eight bits is a little too soft, let's try four. Okay, a bit too harsh, let's go with six. Another thing we can add is a feedback delay. The creation arguments here are delay time and feedback amount. Here the timing is in seconds, obviously. Another little inconsistency, or maybe I've overlooked something in the docs in this quick workout. We hook it up in correct order and take a listen. Okay, as one last thing, we make a low pass filter and need to be careful to instantiate and connect everything in right order. We hook up the filter cutoff frequency to the mouse event's x coordinate multiplied by 2. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed the liveness character of it. See you.